<laughs> well, we were talking about the news just now, and uh, there was a story I heard in the week, I think it was on the radio, and I don't know all the details, but what I heard was that a number of, I think it was Falkland, uh, maybe Gulf War, war veterans, were, I think, suing or complaining to the government because they wanted compensation for post-traumatic stress disorder. Now, I don't know all the ins and outs of it, but it seems to me that if you're in the army and you're a soldier, a certain degree of trauma is kind of inevitable. I mean, after all, if you're any good at your job, you are going to see people getting killed. So I don't understand what the ins and outs of it are. I don't <laughs> know why. No, if I, if I came back and Tony Blair met him and go, all right, well, not really, no. Go on, what's the matter? Well, if you, there was people shooting at us and everything that was all muddy. Well, calm down, don't cry. Well, I will. There was a drill sergeant just kept shouting, saying, look at you, stupid boy, where's well, this gun's not train, clean? And I just cleaned the gun and it was fine, and now he's telling me to clean it again. Yeah, the boots, uh, they were, they were oh, shining. Well, he's got to do that, it's more disgusting. His neck was as big as his head. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but you don't know what they, you know. I don't know, know what the ins and outs of it are, but, um. Uh, is it, what you got to do is make sure you know what you're going into, that's what I do, you got to check the small print. So if I was, you know, going over to, the, like, the Falklands or, you know, the Gulf, I'd put my hand up and go, will, uh, will it be horrible? I go, you hear the back, yes? Will it be horrible? <laughs> it, it will be horrible, yes. It will be horrible. There will be shooting and lots of death. And I go, right, I'm not going to go. And they go, <laughs> exactly. okay then. Okay. That should be fine, yeah. should be fine, yeah. Just like that. Is anyone else scared about this? Uh, pretty much all of us. Okay then, well, we won't send anyone <laughs> <Yeah>. then. <laughs> exactly. my, um, brother, my brother went into the army, right, because um, he couldn't get a normal job. And my dad said, you know, if you don't get a job by such a date, that's it, son, you're going in the army. And then, oh. so when, when was the Falklands? Was it about eight? Eighty-one, right? And he joined back in like eighty-one or something. And uh, he, he, I don't know, he was an older shot or something. Oh yeah. And uh, he wrote back to me, mum, saying, uh, you know, a bad time to join, bad time in this. So she wrote, <laughs> "What bad time to join? That's so sweet, Carl, isn't it?" That's like, dear dad. Yeah, well done. Um, <laughs> don't know if you've noticed. Yeah. Uh, I was on the doll, that, that's for sure. Uh, thank you for joining uh, a month before the Belgrano. Anyway, uh, go on. my mum called up, spoke to the sergeant and said, can you leave him out of this one? Can you leave him out of this one? What, he, the Falkland War? He's only just joined and she called him Chuck, which he got done for. Like, she, she's one of them, it's, I think it's a northern thing, like saying, how are you, Chuck? Yeah. And she called the sergeant Chuck and he, he, he the sergeant said to her, like, my brother, uh, your mum, you know, she's called up and asked if you can not go, which, uh, of course, you know, I mean, it, it, we'll see how it goes. But can what? You tell what do you mean? Why did the sergeant even entertain this? Well, that's... Pilkington, come here. Your mum's been giving me a bit of earache. Now, listen, tell her I've told you, but can you call her, because she was really, she called me Chuck and everything. Can you call her and say you don't mind? Well, not really. Oh, please, because I've promised her, uh, say you want to go. No, please, say you want to go. Why was he entertaining this phone call? Probably because he was new. What? Because he was new to the army, I suppose. Who? No, you're, I mean the sergeant. Right. Uh, I don't know, maybe so, they do that. So what happened? Did he didn't go in the end? So he didn't go, no. You can't do it! But you that's ludicrous! Go, I love it, that. Uh, we went over the top. Pilton, no, I've, I've got a note. Yeah. Is this, is this really your mum? Yeah. Okay, no, this seems to be in you order. Because I notice it says, um, uh, I do not want to go into the army, I don't want to go and fight, and it's crossed out and it's good, my mum says don't yeah. go. Now, you didn't this write is, this yourself. No, no, my mum wrote this. Okay, you definitely wrote this yourself. Your excuse. You're going to have to d um, fill envelopes. No, I'm, I'm sure if, if he was needed, he would have had to go, but I think they made a bit of a special effort. They sort of said, oh. Well, it wasn't conscription anyway. Oh, no, obviously. But were the, the other army, soldiers think, going around just going, <laughs> Wilkington. <laughs> no, he ended up being a mechanic in there, and he got kicked out for um, going for a packet of fags in a tank. <laughs> What? Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Do you mean he nipped down the shops yeah. in a tank? Yeah. I don't okay. believe that, Carl. You've Honest made that. to God. That, and he went off with the sergeant's wife. So that didn't help, and he ended up getting kicked out. Sorry, your, your brother's a genius. I love this. I love this. First of all, um, he gets a call from his mum, going to let him off, and he goes, oh, God. Then he goes, uh, uh, where is, where's Pilkington? His mum's on the phone. He's, where is he? Um, he's... Near your house, Sarge. Near my house? Well, why is... No, no reason. Uh, well, when he comes back, when he's finished, tell him his mum called. And can he get me a packet of hands? <laughs> tell him to walk this time. Wow. This is ludicrous. The, so the sergeant phoned out that he was sleeping yeah, I, with his wife? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, Did, I was did your mum phone out and say, let him off? <laughs> <laughs> no, let him off this time. Him. Can he... Yeah, yeah. 
That's yeah. fantastic. But he misses it. I mean, I haven't seen him for about 11 years. But ever since he came out, he's just kept getting into trouble and that. And the army, you know, people slag it off. But I think if you're a certain type of person, it's, it's good for it you. He didn't straight him either. How yeah, did it? No. He was going down the shops in a tank. He was shagging someone no, behind but their he was, back. It's yeah. really weird. It's like back then, he was like a proper adult. And he had a house and he collected crystal with his wife and that. <laughs> and now, he hasn't got any of that. Has he got the wife? No. Has he got the crystal? Don't think he has. And he I, I, I seriously haven't seen him for about 11 or 12 years. Oh, so I it always start, uh, Carl's stories always start off nice and funny, and then they just leave me empty and slightly yeah. depressed. I don't know whether to hug him or shoot him, put him <laughs> out of his misery. Can we take Carl to the... Uh, phone in if you think I should take Carl to the vet and have him put down. Because it's just too stressful. <laughs> People want to ask you something. A problem. They've got a problem to solve. It can be anything. It could be a personal problem. It could be a scenario. It could be about... Uh, it could be about... War. It can be anything. But it or it could be more flippant, I suppose, and like yeah. yeah, it could be. Yeah, but I prefer stuff that I could see. So you can get your teeth into. And, and, and actually, you know, sort out. What, war, like war? War is too, it's a bit, bit big for me, that one. Do you think? I don't want to get into that. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? If Tony Blair came to you and he went, Carl, listen, I'm having a bit of trouble here. I, I don't know what to do. I've tried everything. I've tried spin. I've tried being tough. I've tried backing down. I've tried getting other countries involved. They don't want to know. What do I do? What do I do? Uh, you don't know. Tricky one. I don't it's get, a tricky one. It's a tricky one. Yeah. I don't worry about it. If it's going to happen, it's going to happen, isn't it? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Just get in the bath. Put a mattress on the on top of you. That's it. Sorry. Wh why are you doing <laughs> that? Ooh, slow down. Why are you doing that? That's what they say you do, isn't it? If it kicks off. If what uh, kicks off? If, if, there's, if there's a war and that, you, you get in the bath, put a mattress on top. Right. Did yeah. they do that in the Second World War for six years? Was that make, making bunk beds? That's just what I read somewhere. Yeah. Get, is the bath full of water? Uh, no. No, no, no. 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 That'd be daft. Okay. Yeah, I, think that, of I think they were enamel baths then, though. I think they'd stop a bit of shrapnel. I think the plastic ones you get nowadays would probably melt on you. And the mattress where your dad has cut it in half, all the foam would come out and the springs would get you in the eye. It's come to our attention that the Allied forces um, all around the world in active service fighting for their country even though they're in danger and they're missing their loved ones they all have one thing in common the love of one man, the respect of one fellow soldier. He's a civilian but he's one of them. He is to some, uh, 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 just a, a little bald-headed fool, Carl Pilkington. Carl, what do you think? What do you think of this? It's an honour, isn't it, to do this? Yeah, it's all right, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. OK, there's people out there, Carl, they're fighting in Afghanistan, Iraq, all over the globe. They're in a dark building. They're not breaking radio silence. Morale, often low. There's one man they can turn to to cheer them up. Come on, they want some words of encouragement, some words of wisdom. Something to keep them going. A message to the troops. Come on. Go, Carl. What you're is like, it? You're like their Winston Churchill. I don't know what to say to him, really. Do you know any soldiers? Well, yeah, my brother was one, wasn't he? Yeah, mm, but he got kicked out. Why did your brother get kicked out of the army? Um. well, there's a few things. I, I think you get a few chances. I think the final straw was nipping out for some fags in a tank. <laughs> Um, Amazing. And it's just see that, just a little corner shop, just like uh, things shaking, jumping off the shelves, and they're going, what is this? What is going on? 20 Rothams, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's loads of things. It was that. Um, what else did he do? I think the sergeant wasn't happy that my mum wrote, wrote the sergeant a letter um, trying to get my brother out of going to Northern Ireland. What did she say? I love this. What did she say? Wow. She wrote a letter. Like, oh. trying to get him out of PE. <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. It was all Let's like... He's had a chesty cough. Let's not forget, your your mum is a person who put Tipex on a spider so your dad couldn't kill it, so she knew it was oh, yeah, the right so spider. In up. case your dad killed a real spider, then thought, I'd better replace it. <laughs> I mean, the no, it wasn't, it wasn't just that. That was, that. It was Tipex, so that when my dad was vacking up, or my mum was vacking up, it stood out. It wasn't like it wasn't like branding a sheep, right? It was there, so it stood out because they used to have like, um, what's the name? 
laminate flooring. Right. And my dad changed it to darker carpet. So right. all of a sudden you couldn't see it anymore. I've I, never heard anything like this. I don't remember this story. You, uh, no, she she no. had a pet spider? What do you mean? It she was just a, a yeah, spider. Kind of, yeah, he kept a, she kept a spider. They had a spider, but then it became a pet because it was there all the time, as opposed to just getting rid of it straight away. <laughs> But, you know, because you didn't clear it away oh, straight away, house. suddenly it's a pet. It's, it's... Yeah, it's a house spider, because they live in houses. You make them welcome, they get rid of other little bugs and termites and stuff. My brother's left home, I've left home, my sister's gone. It's something for my mum, isn't it? She's got a budgie. There's only so much you can do with that. It's not as free, is it, as a spider? Right. So she just looks after that one. They oh, live I'm for about so eight lonely. years. I'm bored of a budgie. Get yourself a spider. <laughs> anyway. They live in holes. That's a different thing altogether. She just wrote to the sergeant and said, um just sort of, you know, look, I didn't want him to join the army. It was his dad. Uh, he didn't get a job. His dad told him, if you don't get a job, you're going to join the army. Mm. He ended up joining. He's joined at a bad time. He hasn't had enough practice at this yet. <laughs> Can you just let Surely him off? That's for them. Enough Surely that's for them to decide. <laughs> yeah, no. she's on there going, he can't shoot for top. Yeah. He, <laughs> he was all right about it. The only thing that really annoyed him is my mum started off the letter by saying, hello, Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> Not appropriate. <laughs> and, uh, and he called back, though. He did call her and said, look, you know, I don't appreciate it being called Chuck and stuff, but I've got you know, you know, a lot of mothers are in the same boat. Sorry, he actually mentioned don't call me Chuck. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he brought it up. Because it's all about respect, isn't it? And Well, she's a civilian. Yeah, but I suppose it's, it's respect still. He's putting his life on the line. Someone's saying, you know, all right, Chuck. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so he phoned back and he said, presumably... Well, I mean, if I was him, I would have... Not only would I have sent him to uh, Northern yeah. Ireland instantly, yeah. I'd have put him in the most dangerous spot. Yeah. I mean, as punishment. To get your mum to write a letter... No, 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 no. He didn't ask my mum to do it. She did it off her own back. He was probably horrified, wasn't he? Oh, Oh, wow. that bit... Imagine that. The sergeant major go... Attention. Got a little letter here. Let me read it to you. <laughs> Hello, Chuck. <laughs> Just reads it out. <laughs> and he goes, Pilkington, come here, you horrible little man. Imagine him reading out in front of the troops. I remember sort of looking up to him, thinking, oh, that's, he's, he's in the army, I want to do that. And he used to come home quite a lot, but he used to do me dad's head in, because he'd turn up with, like, a wagon with, like, a load of his mates in it. Just turn up, un-sort of, you know, we didn't have any notice. Just turn up and he'd bring them all in. Come on, he'd be drinking me dad's whiskey, he'd kick off, me dad's saying, get out. Mind the spider. And, uh, Don't tread on the spider. <laughs> yeah, he used to just turn up like half of F troop. And they just take over the house. <laughs> and my dad used to be on night, so he'd hear all this going on, come down and go, what's going on? Get out! And he's going, oh, we've come out, get out! So it'd sort of kick off a bit, I'd see him for a few minutes, and then he'd drive off again on the truck. Not it, a model soldier, then? Uh, well, what's, what's a model soldier? I don't know. I mean, I, I always thought it was good. When I was younger, and, you know, he joined, I, I was like, oh, I'm going to do that when I get older. And my dad always said, you won't be able to cut it. He said, you can't do it. Oh. And I said, no, I can. I can. Look how good... Cos I used to make my bed really neat. Right. So it was mainly housework you were good at. <laughs> yeah. You're probably better off as a mum. No, no, no. I, I, it was like... Cos it has to be immaculate, doesn't it? They look for no creases and that, and I yeah. was a bit paranoid with my bed. Just with the with the duvet and that. I used to... Duvet? Do they have duvets? Well, I don't, don't know, but just making the bed pride in appearance of, of yeah. the bedroom. Yeah, it's all about discipline. Once, it's all about, once yeah. I made it, no one could sit on it. I used to get all all stressed out and feel sick if someone came in and sat in my bed after I'd made it. So they don't be coming in. And it was annoying because that's where the CV was. So everyone used to come in to have a go on the CV and sit on my bed. They'd be going, don't sit on my bed. Made it. Right. Uh, Why so, did you used to feel sick? It was a bit of a thing. I just OCD. didn't like it. A I, little I, bit of, yeah. It's like, I've, I've gone to the trouble of making it. Why have you just come in and sat on it? I wouldn't have made it. Yeah, but, what, but hold on, though. You, you do that in the army, Sergeant Major comes in and goes, Bill Wooden, and he just he does it for a laugh. He turns over your bed, he pulls out your locker, he gobs on your shoes, right? He goes, start again, you can. What are you going to do? Going to be sick? No, you're going to go, yes, Sergeant Major, I'm going to start again. <laughs> no, I'd say, why, why did you do that? I'm missing home as it is. I'm stressed out. I'm just trying to make me, me, me surroundings as nice as possible. Teddy's on the floor. You keep coming in right. and messing with it. Can you not do that? Who are you talking to, you little bold can? Maybe my dad's right then, because he said he said that. He, I mean, that my dad sort of said the bed making's all right. He said, but you're not that good with laces. 
Wow. Did you have to tie your laces? Well, I just uh, just never been that good. I can tie them, but they never sort of stay tied for a long time. I have never seen him tie his laces. I've realised that. No. He always comes in. Are they Suzanne little, doing for is you? Is he then? a little just... mank, one of those little um, mank trainers where they're all tucked in, where you don't see the laces? I tend to just get a good knot on them and then just leave them and kick them off, and then they're tied permanent. So you've got slip-on, laced-up shoes, basically? Yeah. I don't like well, laces. They can't be I don't enough. understand why laces are good anyway when you're in the army, especially with boots. You have boots with like about 60 holes in them. If you're in a rush, if you're in bed, you get out of the bed, you make the bed, the sergeant comes in, rips it apart again, he's going, there's a war, and you're going, stop messing with the bed. And then I'm there trying to put my boots on. You've got 60 laces. I don't understand why Velcro hasn't been used. Velcro is ideal for a war situation. You're in bed, woo, siren goes off, you jump out. Why do you want boots with loads of laces? Well, that's a thought for the, uh... <laughs> if again. there's any top brass listening. How would you cope, Carl, in a war situation? Ignore the, 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 the mechanics of being a soldier. I'm talking about the fear. I mean, these men and women are brave beyond compare. Mm. Constantly under duress. I was told they had good pain threshold. By whom? Um, a woman at that face rub place I went to. Right. She, uh because they ask you when you go in. She said, what's your pain threshold like? I said, I don't know, I'm trying to avoid it. She was going, yeah, but, you know, would you say you're very, very good, medium or bad? I can't imagine you getting hurt much because because the, the signals to the brain, you've got, you know, it just is dulled, mm. isn't it, with you, so you don't really... Yeah, but then Suzanne always moans at me when I'm going, oh, God, my wisdom teeth is aching. She's going, oh, shut up. She's saying, you haven't got any wisdom teeth, you dopey cat. <laughs> no, she just always goes, I had it and I didn't make a fuss, but it's one of them things that you can't get through to people pain, isn't it? Yeah. And they don't know what your pain threshold is. So, like I say, I've got brilliant pain threshold. I'm saying my tooth's hurting. She's saying, oh, shut up. But she doesn't know. I wish you'd... I think I've talked about it before about giving someone the pain that you've got. So you go, there, have a feel of that. I'm yeah. in agony here. Yeah. yeah, but you've made it up that you've got a high pain threshold. This isn't. This, no. this is not a sign no, of No, the really woman proven. told me. The woman told me. Well, does she, she know? Because I haven't got to it yet. <laughs> when I had the face rub, yeah. she was sticking electric into my head. <laughs> and she was going. <laughs> what sort of place is this? This wasn't a spa. No, it was. It's what Jesus they do now. Jesus Christ! What she she I don't know. So she just plugs something into the mains. She plugs something in and rolls Did it. Did she over. have an assistant called Igor? Was it in a castle in Bavaria? She plugged this thing in, rolled it over my head, <laughs> and said, "Is that hurting?" I was going, "No." And she went, "All oh, right." And she said, and then by the end of it, she said, "Look at that. I had that on full." I said, "What is it?" She said, "It's an electric current that does something." I was going, "Really?" That does something. She's a scientist. <laughs> and, um, She's yeah. a genius. She said, "She said now, when you fill out that form, just put you really good at pain threshold." But you're really good at pain. You're gonna come again? Well, yeah, 50 quid. So do it, but let's try it on your testicles next time. <laughs> so, you know. Plus. Sorry, how is this? What was this supposed to be achieving? It was why like is, a face why rub. Is, you've gone in for a facial and she's testing out what your pain threshold is. Well, that's what is. I said. I said, hang on a minute, what do you mean? It's meant to be relaxing this. Yeah. You normally have whale noises happening. <laughs> yeah. And now it's going to be me screaming. She said, no, no, it's just, you know, we have to ask, we have to make sure because yeah. there is a bit of pain. Well, you know, is, heat yeah. is heat in these hot yeah. cloths. Um, yeah, yeah. Better than thumb screws. Let's get the thumb screws out now. Yeah, and plus all that kidney stone pain that yeah, I had. You and... just were in agony when you had the kidney stones. You don't. I don't remember you having this triumphant pain threshold. You I've gave up instantly. And yeah. And yeah, because you have to to get seen. If I go in there and I'm going, I'm in agony, and they're going, you don't look like you're in agony. I went, I'd be at the back of the queue. So you have to go in and go. Oh, yeah. And so, they're going, quick, get him in. So pain threshold is good for yourself, but it's not good for other people. So you were bullshitting? You didn't feel pain at all? I was in agony, but I can hold it off. I can sit there and be quiet and have a sweat on. But if you do that in hospital waiting room, it'll be the little div who's coming with a pan on his head, who's screaming <laughs> and saying his head's throbbing. That's what I'm saying. So to get seen, you have to put it on. It's like a baby crying. There's nothing wrong with it. What's he crying for? He's probably hungry. Well, I'm hungry. I'm not crying. But that's what they use, isn't it, right. to get attention? So you're, so you're braver than a baby, is what you're saying. You're braver than a baby. <laughs> That's all we've established here. In some cases, in, not in when others. When you fill out the form. Not in you... others. Sometimes <laughs> babies are braver. When are babies braver? You can chuck them in a pool when they don't panic. 
<laughs> I'm Robert. Sorry, will you leave my baby alone? No, I'm doing an experiment. Mr. Pilkton, will you stop throwing children in the pool? No, babies. You're, ba you're barred from this swimming pool from now on. I mean babies. It's the same way you can chuck one out of a window <laughs> and it can land and it won't break its back. It's no, no, that's not true. Do not do, do that. Not do that. If that you are a maniac, you cannot throw a baby out of a window. It's just what I'm you hear that? You're thinking of a cat. And don't throw cats out. Don't throw any living thing yeah, out of a window. Just what you can't throw a baby out of the window and it won't break its back. What are you talking no, about? No, it's just there's a certain height. It's all about us tenting up. We tense up, don't we? It's like how once someone who fell out of a plane, they passed out, and because they passed out when they landed, they were relaxed. They no. woke up, they were like, oh, yeah, what happened then? Someone fell out of a plane? <laughs> <laughs> That's bollocks. It's not, honestly. How no. far up was the plane? Oh, high up. It's a plane, isn't it? Well, what's the lowest height well, that a plane well, could be at? Even if it was at... 30 feet, that's a height, isn't it, to fall without... Yeah, exactly, but if was it was the higher... Plane, was the plane just on the runway? No, it was iron up, iron up. It was high up enough. Is this the way you went <laughs> for the holiday? We're going to high up enough. <laughs> Fuck me. Can't, can't even talk. So, yeah, pain oh. threshold. I'm very good at it. So, uh, would you say you've ever been brave? Because I was thinking before we did this... I can't think of a time when I've ever been brave. I don't think I've been cowardly. I've just never been in a situation where I needed to be brave, particularly. And I've always managed to avoid fights, conflicts. Yeah. You see, I, uh, when I was in Salford, I'd nip to Greg's to get a pasty. Mm. I heard some bells going off. I came out, just thought, oh, I don't know what that is. Went over to the car, sort of thinking, oh, I can't wait to have this pasty when I get home. Cup mm. of tea, nice cup of tea, maybe a bit of bread. I love the fact that, that his head was just filled with food because he was <laughs> buying food and thinking food. When he's eating, I'm thinking, I'm eating food. Food. Just just one big globular mess of food cells in his head yeah. for, the, for the duration of the food experience. I can remember that food thought going on now, and it was probably, like, 15 years ago. <laughs> But I remember how happy I was. I'm out at the Greggs, I've got what I want, I'm on my way home, this pie's hot, it's gonna be hot when I get home, it's gonna be a nice cup of tea, bread. These are the things you save, and yet you forget really important facts. Yeah, he doesn't know why wars are happening, yeah. but he does remember this. Yeah, but yeah. Listen, this is why I remember it. Like I said, you forgot the bit that I said. A bell going off. Mm. I don't know what's going on there. Uh, I'm walking over the road, put the key in the car, I turn round, bloke comes running out of the post office, obviously the bell's gone off, he's got a big shotgun, balaclava on, and he stops and looks at me, he's there with a big gun in his hand, and he's looking at me. And I just, I wasn't scared, I just was thinking, does he want me pie? <laughs> I remember thinking, if he said, if he said, I want that, I'd have to give it up. <laughs> so a man with a gun? I told Suzanne, she said no, he was probably thinking about nicking your car. He's got what, his he key. didn't have a car ready? He came, no, he, he had the balaclava, it. he had the balaclava, the gun, and he goes, fuck me, I forgot the car. In the end, he sort of ran off down the back alley. I love the fact that you, he looked over at you for a split second and you thought he might be interested in your Was pie. Was there other people around? Were Nicked you it. sure this happened and you weren't reading a comic book? No, it happened. And so he looked you in the face, he yeah, saw you. his balaclava, he made eye contact, I looked at him, everything sort of stopped for a minute, and then he just sort of legged it off down the back alley. And uh, you, what, what, did you, did, what did you say to the police when you obviously I went? I didn't, I just what? went. Well, well you were witness to the risk. Let me pie. Like I said, it was warm. Oh, it's not going to stay warm forever, is it? But when they when when it was on Crime Watch a few weeks later... No, it wasn't. That's what was weird. I said to Suzanne, oh, let's watch, like, Grand Reports tonight, see if I'm on the telly or anything. Nothing. Didn't even get reported. Why would you be on the telly if you just ran just away? Just didn't say CCTV or something like that. If I was involved in it, if they went, this happened today in Salford, outside Greg's. Are you this man with the pie? I wanted to make sure I was well out of this one. Because Suzanne sort of said, oh, should you get involved? But you shouldn't get involved, because then I'm at, threat, I'm at risk, aren't I? Nobody well, was killed. Well, there you are. We're back to bravery again, aren't yeah. we? Yeah, here's bravery. Go on, then. Next door but one. There's a fellow there. He, uh, he likes a drink. He came home late one night, banging on the door. Obviously forgot his key. He was trying to kick the door in. I looked out the window. Going, Who's that thing? Someone's breaking in. Right? I see it's in. I saw all the curtains twitching. He just went back to bed. Now I kept an eye on him. He kicked so hard, he fell back, dropped his curry, landed in the road. <laughs> dropped his curry! Right. Oh, God, why didn't he get a pie from Griggs? Cos that lands and it's still fine. So, anyway, he passes out. Right. Curry all over the shop. Yeah. Head in the road. Cars come down that road. Yeah. Sometimes pretty fast. Yeah, it's night time. He could yeah. get his head squashed. Yeah. Like I said, 
Curtains are still a switching. No one's a helping. <laughs> <laughs> I I go out there and I go, you alright, you alright? And he's he's totally off his head. He's obviously had a you know alright skin full. Uh, he's going, oh, where am I, where am I? I'm going, you're outside your house, but you've got to get off the road because you're going to get squashed. So he's like, oh, and he could hardly move, so I sort of picked him up, sat him on the pavement, sort of picked up the curry and stuff. Suzanne came out, what's going on? I said, oh, look at him, he's in the right state. Anyway, sort of coming round a little bit. Um, in the end, I said, where's your keys? Got him in his house. Job done. But that's not bravery. That's not bravery. There was no there's threat no, to there's you. No... It's just put yourself out of it for two minutes. It is bravery because he's he's out of his head. He could have thought I was attacking him. He could have swung at me. Now the good he's thing is he's lying in the road, unconscious, covered in curry. <laughs> this this is not a threat. It is a threat. I'm out on the street late at night. Someone could have come round the corner and thought I was mugging him. And, and then they, they attacked me. Why would they attack you? They take because they think, what, you, what, you're wrong, what are you doing? People don't ask questions because you're not allowed to. Like with the sergeant, they chip in straight away. I know what's going on here. No, you don't. You don't know the full story. He's pissed up and his curry all over it. <laughs> it, isn't, it isn't blood. It's masala. <laughs> You hear about this all the time, misunderstandings. <laughs> now, I helped him. The day after, he remembers, he comes round and he gave me some minced meat that he had left over. <laughs> I love this! Where do you live? This is amazing! Oh, my God! So, the thing oh is, it God. goes to show that I put myself out, he appreciated it, he said, you're right, you know, the way cars come round here, oh, I'd, I'd had a bit of a week, you know, I'd had a lot to drink, good on you. Now, no-one else chipped in. Now, it is bravery, kind of, because no. no one else went out there and helped. You didn't even know about that. It's only because you just asked. It was ages ago. I don't shout about it. I don't want an award. <laughs> have a go hero. I don't want any of that. I just <laughs> did my There's bit. no have a go did hero you, about it. Did you take the mince meat? Yeah, I did, yeah. It was good stuff. Yeah. That's uh, better than an award in a way, isn't it? I told him that. <laughs> so, it depends. I think there's different <laughs> ways. Have a mince meat. I love that. <laughs> I, would, uh, I was saved by a, a bald man. Slaughter my finest pig, <laughs> mince the meat, and send it to him. What about phrases from the uh, war days? What about things like um, careless talk costs lives? What do you make of that? Careless talk. I suppose just busy chatting in a trench rather than getting out there. <laughs> no, it doesn't! It doesn't mean that! <laughs> Have another go. Careless talk costs lives. They used to have posters up all over London and other cities. Careless talk costs, costs lives. lives. There was another one, there's another saying that means the saying that might give you a clue. The walls have ears. Yeah, but that just means um, don't be slagging someone off because <laughs> someone will hear it, pass it on, and then they'll end up fighting their own instead of who they should be fighting. Well, no, you're and almost there, but think it, about what you mean. It's when... not about gossip, it's not about... But it, in a way it is, it's, but it's, it's very specific in, gossip. Much more important tittle-tattle. Careless whispers. No, that's, 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 <laughs> that's George, George Michael. Michael. Say again, okay. what's the first one again? Careless yeah. talk Careless. costs lives. I don't know, I imagine it being like a... Don't go shooting your mouth off about things you know about the war effort, cos there might be a German spy in the pub, disguised as a barmaid. Oh, you're lovely, Tracy's going, Yeah, I am, Carl. What do you know no, about the war? That's what do you true, know? that does happen. I remember our my brother being in the army, he, he had the same thing. He what? was told He was told not to, cos he liked the women and that. Yeah. And he was told, listen... One of them might be a German spy? Yeah. He said, don't, don't be going out with German women, cos they're quite muscly. And could be a man. Could be a gang of them. No, and they'll do you in. Sorry, your brother was told, don't go out with a gang of German women because they're quite muscly and they might do you in. Yeah, because it's all part of the thing. They sort of go out, like you say, pretending they're just like women out on the night because he was he was in Germany for a bit. He was posted over there. Right. And apparently they target like British soldiers and that. And like I say, he, he liked his women. He'd just go along with it, thinking this is good. Um. You know, Actung baby or whatever. <laughs> That's a okay, new two. Hey, yeah. Actung baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Actung baby. Yeah. And then you know, got him an headlock and good night Vienna. <laughs> good night Vienna. Why? Uh, why would? They, why are these random German women just killing oh, sorry, British blokes? What? What's the reason? It for was this? a proper thing. I remember him telling me, telling oh, me, mum. 
So, you know, go there had a right dilemma. I met some women, German, couldn't go with them though, because we were told that there might be, uh, you know, might be trouble. Really, yeah. Honestly, that's, that's Sorry, a fact. Sorry, British soldiers were getting beaten up by German women. <laughs> this is not true. <laughs> Can't be. I think the things that sum up Englishness, I mean, talking of the weather, I think drinking, uh, war, we love a ruck. Yeah. We built on war. We're a warrior race. We're pretty good at war. We used we to be. We are good. We used to be good. I don't yeah, know no, we're very good. We're, good. we're we're very good. I mean, we I think we reached our peak with Churchill. Probably that's probably our, our greatest uh, hour, our finest hour. According to him. Yeah. Well, he should know he was there. He should know. And he liked to drink, didn't he? He loved a brandy. I'm just not afraid of a drink. He liked to. He'd get pissed up, and he'd no wonder he'd fight him on the beaches. He'd fight him anywhere. Yeah. See, there's an example of a posh bloke. It was like I was saying, he'd lead you into battle. He'd have a weapon too. He'd go in there. He didn't he didn't sit back. I mean when he was old, he did. But nothing wrong with being posh if you're willing to go and, you know, get stuck in. What do you think, Carl? Um is it as scary though? I mean imagine if, if he was rougher sounding and he was on on the front line and Like uh, he went he went, You fucking little cunt. I fight you on the beach, uh, look, see me down in Brighton Monday. I'm gonna fucking smack your head in, you little fucking German cat. Like that, you mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just a morale boost. Yeah. Well, that's the other point of one, isn't it? That he was. Those speeches were for as much as morale as uh, information and and defiance. You don't want to feel like the the leader of your country could glass you if you got on the wrong side. No, of exactly. You. It's got to be. It's it's got to be rules under war, hasn't it? I mean, that fair play has got to come into it as well. Talking of the um. English sense of fair play and war. When um, the crossbow was invented, a lot of people wouldn't use it. They said it was unchristian. So our soldiers sort of resisted it. So Europeans got this thing that needed no skill and it was shooting these bolts and they could reload quick and uh, versus our, our bowmen. What do you think of that? What do you think of going, oh, it's cheating, we won't use it, but having a disadvantage? That's honour, isn't it? It's almost like it's okay to kill someone, but with skill. But uh, what's the problem here? What am I meant to be worrying about? Well, you've got you've got bow and arrows. Yeah. They're amazing. They're heavy. They're, they're your arms. They've got they've got trained bowmen. They're skilled. The most skilled sort of marksman uh, uh, soldiers in the country. Someone comes along, and goes, "Don't worry about that." Is a crossbow? Just pop it in, pull it back. <laughs> Deadly. Deadly, quick, anyone can use it. So now you've got anyone with a crossbow killing people. Women, children. Anyone can use it. So the Europeans, they're going crazy. Oh, William Tellen is, they're, he's shooting apples off heads. Yeah. Right? But we did, we resisted it because we thought it was, you know, unchristian and cheating to kill without skill. What do you think of that? But where were the where were the actual bows and that being made? Because that's the thing, isn't it? The the the, the company who's making them, they just right. want to get out to a big market. Brilliant. That's that's what they do now with the iPod and everything. It's not about people wanting more music than ever before. That's not the case. It's about having having the accessory. And if the bow and arrow was like sold as this, you know, light to carry for all the family. <laughs> that's that's how it would have happened. That's what it's all about. <laughs> Ye new bow and arrow. From Ronco. But what what do you think the problem yeah, is? Yeah, but you're not quite getting Ricky's point. His point is the idea of there being sort of rules and fair play and etiquette in war. The I don't, objective I don't is think to kill the place, enemy. I don't think war and that is a place to start getting all uppity about someone cheating or having a better oh, system. Really? You think all fair in love and war, do you? Yeah, definitely. Right. Well, it's just about rules, winning. isn't it? No, not in a war. There isn't rules. So what about things like the Geneva Convention? It's the understanding that even if we're entering into a war, theoretically, there's a set of agreed universal rules. It's good for both sides, rules. isn't it? Fair play has got well, to come into everything. What's yeah. extraordinary about the idea of English fair play is, you know, famously the, you know, the approach during the First World War, that we would sort of walk up out of the trenches onto no man's land and sort of politely march at a slow, steady pace across towards the I enemy. Know. I mean, and then we were just being machine gunned down. I mean, it was absurd. Well, I, I know we were fodder. It was fodder to use up some of their bullets. I mean, it was crazy. But, I mean, it's madness. But in a way, it's it's the gentry who are leading us, seeing you know the average Tommy as a sort of as well, cannon fodder. Of, of I mean, course, it's of course. And you know, we've got to realise that most of the people didn't want to be there. 
most of them didn't even understand it. I mean, and if you think of the first and second, you know, they were just wars, you know, but, um, I just, I can't, just can't imagine How what it'd be like. Do you think, Carl, in a war situation, you've seen all those films of the, uh... I mean, that's the one they had a, had a knockabout and stuff, didn't they? They took, you know, the game of football and In that. No Man's Land, yeah. Christmas Day. But who, who took a football there? <laughs> uh, if I was on the front line, I would not be getting out the rule book. I can tell you that much. I'd be going mental. Are you saying there should be some rules or no rules? I mean, you've got to have some rules, otherwise it's, it's just going to be like Grand Theft Auto, isn't it? I'm just going to go about battering everyone. Yeah. And you soon get bored of that. Mm. So I think you've got to have some rules. Right. Which rules would you repeal that already exist that you don't like? Uh, it's a shame you can't tip as much as you used to be able to. You mean in a restaurant? No, just when you're getting rid of a mattress or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I'd just better ask um, Carl a couple of quick questions about Hitler. Then we can uh, we can you know get on with our lives. Okay, yeah, we can take that particular box. <laughs> yeah, put that. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, Carl. Put okay, that particular it's, dictator it's, to bed. It's week it's it's week three of his education. You've you've nailed Rasputin and Che Guevara. I don't want to lose complete sight of those. I, you know, I'll, I'll maybe um, ask you a couple of those in the week just to see, keep your your mind on it. But Hitler, what, tell what, us the story. What have you learnt? Do you want to ask some questions? Uh, no, not really. Just, 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 just sum it up in a minute. What you, th what, what I do you can't think? Can't do it in a minute. <laughs> well, I, I, can I ask some questions then? Let's, uh, where was he born? Austria. Tell us about his early life. Right, he was a young lad. <laughs> um, he, uh, <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> what in his early life? <laughs> Okay. Yeah. He, what's the name? His his um his mum yeah. was his dad's second cousin, which is a bit weird. Yeah, that is weird. Um, they had five kids. <laughs> so he's going. Yeah, it's usually first cousin where I come from. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's unfair, isn't it? Jeez, There's no cool, need for man. that. There Go was on. Uh, there was there was five kids, but only two of them, including Hitler, um, including uh, him and his sister, survived. The others died at an early age. Okay. Right. right. Um, anyway, so, they grew up, and, um, the mum died, and the dad died, and that, and he thought, oh, what am I going to do? Because he didn't do well at school, didn't have many qualifications. No. Liked art. Did he have a GCSE in history? Liked art, right, and then, um, so he said, right, I'm going to go out to Munich. I missed a bit out, actually. Jewish people were in Austria, he didn't really like them. Okay. Uh, he thought they got, you know, uh, special treatments and stuff, and just didn't like him. So he went to Munich and um, he uh, joined the army. Right. Yeah? Yeah. And um, he was in the army and he got injured. Right. So he went to hospital and whilst he was in hospital, uh, the World War One ended and he was like, oh God, I want to I was join that. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> so... <laughs> Don't, because you're breaking the concentration. Yeah, sorry. Um, I, I'm not even sure I want to join in on this one, just in case. Okay. Right, go on. Right, so, um, so... He's in hospital. He's in ended. hospital. It gets a bit better. He's never that fit, though. He's one of these blokes who was always ill. Uh, was on something like 30 tablets a day or something. Comes out of there, uh, joins some other army. Um, right. God, you know, I knew it all this morning. <laughs> <laughs> I can see it running to ground. <laughs> I just see his face going. I'm, I'm not nailed in the fact, am I? And joined a, another army, and he was. Well, <laughs> listen, he, let's try to help you. So here's a good bit. Here's a good bit. I remember this bit. He thought that war to men, right, was like childbirth is to women. That's how important he thought he was. All right. Right. So it's like, um, <laughs> you know, you, you fight for nine months, and at the end of it, you own something, right? Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, he, he goes on and all that. He's in Berlin. Yeah. And uh, he's, he's, you know, he's he's, uh, he's fighting his way through, like you know, trying to take over countries and that. And he does. Uh, does he do Berlin? Does he? Sorry, Sorry wait a minute. Is, is he? Is he? Is he? Uh, <laughs> is he Chancellor yet? Um, what year is it? Thirty-five. So let's what, skip, where let's you? skip the kind of climb to power. Then he's now. He's now. He's now the dictator of Germany. Right. He's in yeah. charge. Yeah. And this is when, you know, he gets his own back on the Jewish people and that, and he's, he's, uh, he's got his own little armies, uh, and he's setting fire to Jewish businesses and, and all this. And, uh, anyway, cut a long story short, he, uh... Please do. He, uh, when he came to, like, f fighting Britain, 
Yeah. Came a bit sort of unst unstuck. Yeah. Right? Satisfying. Not so easy, is it, this world domination, Adolf? Britain was there. France was helping out. Yeah. Americans were helping out. Yeah. So, well, oh, God. So a bit he goes, late, but yeah. Go he, go, he goes into a bunker in Berlin. Yeah. And it's all kicking off. Yeah. And apparently, like, Germany sort of surrenders. Yeah. Says it's all over. Forget it. We can't beat you. He was really annoyed with this. And he thought, oh, I can't, I can't show my face around here. <laughs> so he, uh... Yeah. Because <laughs> it would be embarrassing. He's, he's with his missus, who nobody knew was his wife, right. either, in this bunker. Yeah. And um, so uh, so he said, oh, I've had enough of this. He shoots himself. Yeah. <laughs> she poisons herself. And the chauffeur buries him or something, or burns him. Right. And uh, in all the time he was in charge, 50 million people died. So that's 1918 to 1945. Yeah. Uh, between it felt like that. Between, <laughs> between Travis and the Red yeah. Hot Chili Peppers. Next right. week. That's fantastic. That's remarkable. <laughs> I, I have to say that you, you, you sort of lost your grasp somewhere along the line, because you started off confidently, but... You lost your I've had a really busy week, and last night I was like whizzing through it. Sure. And then this morning I woke up, and you know Suzanne had been away for about three days, right? Yeah. I, I, I hardly spoke to her. She's been busy. I've been busy. First thing to say when I wake up, oh, just ask me some stuff on Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Which living person do you most admire? Uh, Which person throughout any time in history do you most admire? Winston Churchill is pretty good. You like yeah, him? very good. He's Why? Right. Good answer. Because if it weren't for him, we'd be talking German. I'm not that good at that. So. <laughs> I love that. That's, he's not that good at that. I love the fact that even if the Nazis had won, right, in 1945, and we'd be now speaking German, he still wouldn't be that good at it. Although he's not good at English, so I yeah, I suppose he's. I suppose that's true, isn't it? Yeah. All right. Well, here's one. Here's the final one for now. Do you believe in capital punishment? Uh. That's not it in Dr. Fox over the head with a stick. <laughs> Depends. Depends what for, doesn't it? Go on. Oh, if it's something bad. And, uh, well, I assume it would be. <clears throat> they don't, they don't, they don't kill what, people what, now what, for uh, uh, parking illegally. But, but what sort of, what sort of thing are you talking about? What sort of punishment? Capital punishment. Yeah, I know, but what is that? What, what, what are you talking about? Well, guillotine, hanging, uh, uh, hanging's a bit bad. Yeah. Uh, can be fatal, can't it? What do you mean hanging's a bit bad? It's just- It's all bad. Why, mm -hmm. why, why should the state kill someone? Because prisons are getting a bit busy, aren't they? Brilliant. Okay. I just, what's, what's the point in keeping them, you know, people, people around? Well, what's the point in killing them? Just cos it's like, right, that's that done, who's, who's next? <laughs> you know what, <laughs> what can you do with someone if they're mental? <laughs> Employ him on a radio show. Uh, yeah. Play a record, right. Carl. Next question. Play a record. Okay. We'll come back. Anyway, thinking more. Sort more. Of what what, what fears have you got? What worries? Do you do you do, do you ponder the expansion of the universe? Do you worry I don't think about there's it? There's no point. There's no point. Is there? Cause there's nothing I can do about it. So what, with you, it's the, the what the the little Chinese fellow across the road. Just 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 stuff that that I've got to sort out. You know, any bills or anything. I don't worry about the world ending or anything. What, what's the point in that? <laughs> it's true. That I is true. I can't do anything about it. <laughs> I always think that people with more sort of intelligence have the world on their shoulders because they, they worry about stuff that's miles away. Whereas I'm like, you know, I'm happy if if the sun's out. It's like, oh, it's a nice day. Yeah. yeah. I don't what worry about wars and stuff going on because there's now I can do. What would you do if there was a, a war that, uh, that maybe there was? What here? Yeah. Go on holiday. <laughs> <laughs> Play a record, Carl. What do you make of Saint George, the patron saint? What's your take on that? Is he the one who killed a dragon? Right. Tell us the story. There was a dragon problem. Mm -hmm. Um Where? Must have been in England. Right. Um, George took it on. He took on the job. He was like a rent -a kill <laughs> uh, <laughs> He came out. <laughs> the interesting thing with him is, right, he was a hero then. I honestly think if he did that now, there'd be an uproar. Because it's the last, it's the last dragon. It's the same way we try to save the panda and all that now. If he came out and said, I've done it, and they've gone, done what? Yeah. They've just killed the last dragon. They'd, they'd go mental. They'd be marches. <laughs> idiot! Bloody idiot! <laughs> and that's what's interesting. But it was, it was going around burning people. Doesn't matter, we should've, we shouldn't have killed the last one. It's the last one! 
And that's no, what we'd be they, like. They, so they, you should have saved it. You should have captured it and put it in a cage so we can all look at it. There's no stuff. point. It couldn't have bred anyway. It was the last one. Was it definitely the last one? <laughs> well, you were saying it was the last one. I'm not bothered either way. Well, hang on, what? To Sorry, me, hang on. Whoa, 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 whoa. So you think that there were dragons? Well, why are we celebrating them? Well, it could be a metaphor, a dragon slayer. It could be um, a, a bad thing amongst us. It could be a foreign threat. It could well, be things that threaten. Our ne- it could be anything. It could. It's not. It's not to be taken literally, is but it? But the real legend of George was that he was a figure who uh, stood up for Christianity. Doesn't have you ever get- done anything brave? There was a kid at school who used to have epileptic fits a lot, and uh, the teacher used to always say, if it happens, grab his tongue. And I sort of had a go at that once. His tongue. His tongue? Yeah. What what, what do you have a tongue for? To pick stuff up? What do you mean, a tongue? His tongue in his mouth. Oh, his tongue. Oh, his tongue. Right, go on. And they used to say, if he starts starts doing it, uh, grab his tongue and that. And, And I sort of had a go at that once, and it was... Wasn't nice. Well, how'd you grab it? Well, you grabbed his tongue, did you? Well, I tried to. It's like grabbing a slug. <laughs> and plus, his mouth's going up and down. That you think he's going to have me handy? Eh? So you sort of do that thing where you go. So you were fi- you were trying to grab hold of a kid's tongue, yeah? And he was. F- he was throwing himself all o- all over the place. It was in a physics lesson. I sort of had a go, and then I thought this isn't happening. So I just sort of kept putting my hand in, like I'm having a go. But I- I- in my head, I was going, I'm not going to get hold of it. What you could have used is a pair of tongs. Well, firstly, I don't see why this is brave. Uh, kids have an epileptic, epileptic fit and you're just supposed to help them out. I don't know why that's bravery, but even given that, the fact that you were thinking more about yourself in that situation than this other kid. You were thinking, I'll make it look like I'm helping, but I'm not really. And yet this is kid having well, an I epileptic did, fit. Well, I did at the beginning. Doesn't I that sum you up, Carl? Selfish. No, no, it doesn't. Because I, I, I didn't, no one else was having a go. At least I did try and grab it you at one point. You weren't doing anything. You were just making it look like you were. It's, have you ever tried to grab a tongue? <laughs> It's like chasing a chicken. It's murder. <laughs> and after a while, it wears you out. And it was weird anyway, because it, it was like <laughs> a kid. What was he doing it for? I don't know. Like, Where are you know, after hours of chasing love, this kid's tongue? I love the idea of you ever tried grabbing a tongue. It's a, it's a valid question. I love that he's annoyed. He's annoyed that this what poor you, kid's What was your technique? Were you trying to grab it? Just, sort of like just with your thumb and your, what's it, finger? Like, like, yeah. a, like a pincher thing. Yeah. But it was, because his mouth's going down and... Was he, he shouting or just... No, just throwing himself around. So that's your one attempt at bravery. Well, hang on a minute, let me just think of Trying to else. grab a tongue. There was a time you were chased by a bee and you scored a goal. Oh, what about that? <laughs> that, that? That isn't really bravery, is it? As you were, as you were running away from a bee <laughs> and the ball happened to hit oh. your foot and go in. Oh, that count as bravery. I love oh. it when he goes up to the pearly gates and goes, well, you know, have you done the act of courage? Uh, I pretended to grab a tongue. <laughs> a what? A tongue. A tongue. Yeah. Uh, got chased by a beast, scored a goal. It doesn't count as brave at all. Well, what have you ever done? Well, it's a good question. Now, these right. are your clues. The first one, um, <laughs> that army has got some well nice trenches. <laughs> that army has got some well nice trenches. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. And the initials there are <laughs> DW. Do you okay. write some of the questions for 15 to 1? <laughs> Go on. So that army has got, got some a well similar phrasing. Trenches, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, the second one. Um, what are the initials there, Carl? On that person. D D W. D W. Yeah. Right. Uh, the second one. The top of them curtains are all wrecked. All the materials all worn. <laughs> He acts it out though. We've got to get him on telly. We have got to get him on telly because his little face and his his gestures. That's the second one. The initials being H V. Okay. The top of those curtains are wrecked. All the materials are all worn out, right? <laughs> HV. <laughs> and, the f- <laughs> and the final one, um, here's the final clue. Um, I was in Texas the other week, right? I tripped and landed on my knees in a puddle. <laughs> <laughs> what's the, what's the initials? That? WH for that one. So I was in Texas, I tripped up, landed on my knees in a puddle. So that's WH. Incredible. <laughs> He's got it! Is it right? great? It's it's always a bit, I don't know, it's sold in a bad light, it's a bit sort of, a bit gay, isn't it? Right. Okay. I mean, it depends what sort you're talking about, because maybe there's poetry out there that I haven't heard. There's some poetry gayer than others. Yeah. War poetry can't be gay, can it? That was people- I haven't heard, go on. People fighting in the trenches and, it can't be gay, they weren't gay, they were, they were writing to their sweetheart. 
I, I don't know his name. He might might have been a bloke. I don't know. But so is was it was it a sort of a what sort of poem was it? Was it sort of a limerick sort of a like no? It was light? it was uh, well. There's, there's there's famous ones, Wilfred Owen and Siegfried Sassoon, and they're very moving. They're about uh, you know the, 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 what usually happens is that they talk about why are we here? This is you know we've been we've been sold a, a lie here, you know, and they really started seeing war in a different light from 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 their point of view in the trenches famously some of them died so soon after the you know but i prefer they'd written a the poem. proper a proper letter no sort of crypticness that's the problem with right. poems okay so you'd, it, you'd have been disappointed to get dolce et decorum s through the post would you you'd have just said what are you trying to say mate is what's the weather like when you're coming home did you get my socks well yeah sometimes life is a bit like that and it? it's like say what you mean right well, that's the, well. Then that th you have just wiped all art off the face of the earth. If you literally just say what you mean. No, I'm just saying in a letter. Say if I say if I was a woman and me fella was fighting in a war. Right. What's your fella's name? The, Harry. Okay. So Harry. Oh, well, it's right. So when were you married? Uh, about nineteen uh, nineteen thirty-five. Nineteen thirty-five. So uh, you've been married about four years, yeah. Harry. Why don't, you, why don't you go off? Oh, you're a woman, aren't you? Yeah. You don't the Okay. So what, what? What did you see in Harry? What? What, what did? You, why did you like Harry? Was he? He just was like funny. Uh, butch. He wasn't that butch, but that no. didn't matter back then, did it? In the war. No. And you. He and took you, everyone. But what did you say when Harry was say, what said to you? Well, I, I, I thought it was coming because a lot of uh, a lot of our friends right. ended up. Did you just hug there. him and say don't go or something? No point, because that would have just made it tough for him. So. <laughs> What's the point? Just go with it. But if he I had cried after he went, you cried after he went. That's what you do, isn't it? You wouldn't do it in front of him. He's got. To, he's got to go to battle. Okay, so your man goes off to battle. Right. Then I get a, a letter from the colonel right. saying, "Oh, bit of bad news. Harry's dead." Now I get a letter in the post. <laughs> he said. He said what he meant, didn't he? In the well, yeah, and they would do, wouldn't they? They wouldn't yeah. funny around saying, "Oh, he was he was on the warpath and the cloud, the cloud went dark." I go, w w w "What? Just tell me what happened. I don't want a weather forecast." He got shot at the arse and the bullet came out his head. Right now, the colonel he, he would just tell me the basics. Now, <laughs> because he sent his by um, telegram, telegram, telegram. They sent a telegram. Mm. The letter I get from Harry has been stamped, so I get it late. Oh, right? okay. So I get a letter. From uh, from Harry, after he's died. Yeah. Right, and you know he's dead. I know he's dead. So I get right. this letter with his handwriting on. I'm yeah. devastated because I was just getting over his death. Yeah, it's all brought back to me when this letter drops through the post. Well, yeah, three right. days and you're pretty much over it. It's Harry's yeah. handwriting. Yeah. Oh God, what's this? What's now, I written? open it. Yeah. And instead of saying things are bad here, socks are damp, uh, you know everything's grim. It's cold. I'm sick of it. There's a poem. It wouldn't feel like it was from Harry. Well, what, did it's Harry... not in his words. Poems are never in the in the person's words. But did you know Harry was a poet when you married him and made love to him no, that I night? No, I picked it up because all the people were doing it. Something to do in the trenches. But when he carried you over the threshold, Carl, and he, he laid you down and gently kissed you, didn't he? Didn't he say any? Didn't he ever? So he, he must have whispered some sweet nothings into no, your hysterical like red hair. He no, like that, straight no. to the point. He was like, "Get your knickers off." <laughs> Uh, Carl, could we have some monkey news? Well, just before we do monkey news, right? Can I do a little uh, psychological test on you? On me? Yeah. Okay. It's brilliant. This someone emailed it in. Brilliant. Right. Little story with mm -hmm. a question at the end. Okay. Right. Right. Oh, this is going to be so <laughs> annoying. No, no, no. It's not honestly. It's well, it is because you're going to think it's science and it's going to be trite. All right. Well. Go on. Right. Little little story first. Right. There's this funeral. Right. And this girl was at a funeral. Same funeral? Yeah. Right. It, w it was a mother's funeral. Oh, yeah. Right. She met this fella who she didn't know, right? But she thought this fella who she met was amazing. She didn't know him, right? But she thought he was brilliant, right? Like a dream fella. Right. And she fell in love with him, right? But never asked for his, his number, his phone number. Right. Right. And she couldn't find him. Now, a few days later, the girl killed her own sister. Right? Yes. Question is, why did she do that? Okay, well it's one of those stupid things then, isn't it? <sighs> so it's not logic, it's, it's, 
It's what am I thinking? No, no, it's not. So it's, it's a proper, so it's, it's a so proper it's mental logic. test. It's a it's proper a, mental test. A mental test. It does. It is a bit mental. So, so you understand the story? Uh, yeah? I kind of. Let me just get it right. So there's a funeral. A girl goes to the funeral of her mother. Yeah. Um. She, she meets the guy, or she. She, she meets, meets the guy at the funeral. She, she meets, meets the she's she, all, He uh, looks all right. I fancy a bit of that. Right. right. Has a chat with him. Yeah. But doesn't get his name, doesn't get a phone number or anything. So, 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 to cut a long story short, the things are asked, right, so, so, the reason she kills her own sister, is this something to do with finding out something about the man she met? Well, I, just answer the thing. Just, why do you, why do you- Oh, okay then. Um, I'll answer it then. Um, she went mental. She, he was a spy, called Derek. What do you mean, just answer it? Anyway, I'm testing Steve. Right, well, she killed her own sister because, uh, her sister, um, had stolen some money from her. And was sleeping with her husband. Is that is that it? Well, well, I, well, I don't know. It's an answer. It's an answer. It's an answer. <laughs> what's, what's, what's the answer on the paper? <laughs> so, well, come on, what come is- Come on! Well, the, the answer is- No, an answer is- <laughs> That she was hoping that the guy would appear at the funeral again. He'd, he'd go <laughs> to the funeral. Right, that's not a proper psychological test. It is, it's one of those here. stupid little shitty things. It's, it's, it's like a man goes into a field and dies. Why? His parachute didn't open. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> oh, I'm surprised it's, you'd learn anything. Oh, uh, I God. love that. I'm Romeo you'd learn and Juliet. Oh, Juliet's a fish. He said she was hoping that the guy would appear again at the funeral. If you answered this correctly, you think like a psychopath. This was a test by a famous fella, right? Who used it on killers, and most of the killers got the answer right. Did you also well, think that? Was that the answer the, you gave but, when you no, first read it? No, I didn't know, I didn't know. But I, I wondered what you would have got. Good, yeah, so that's proof that I'm a not a psychopath. Yeah, but that, that's the point, but it's a, it's, a, it's a psychological test for looking at something very, very specific. What's up with that? Well, what, what was the best that could happen? That he'd got it right so he is a psychopath? What annoys me is you're not happy with that, that, uh, that test, but before you wasted three minutes trying to balance a pair on my head. <laughs> Right, it's the time that most people I imagine have been waiting for. Monkey news. Play the jingle. Okay. Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news. Right. Um, Come on. <laughs> Come on. It should be ready, Kyle. Uh, it's we're, amazing, we're isn't it? It's like, uh, uh, Nicholas Witchell. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, ooh, the bomb. No, what, no, that's not the first. Um, Come on! No, it's always difficult, isn't it, to, to sort of find something that's good each week, right? Last week, we did the chimp- It is for us, yeah. Did, it, we had the chimps who were running a health spa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right? Uh, we've covered the one who, who nicked a car to go on to Spain. Yep. To wow. throw his future out. All- all shite. Uh, the hairdresser. I think he's- you know, we've done that one, the little monkey hairdresser. This week, we're looking at monkeys, um, that they're using- do you know, like, monkeys, they, 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 know, they know- they know how, like- I've how, lost the will to live, Steve. Oh, well, I don't want to do it. <laughs> But, <laughs> well, come on, just, come on! What are monkeys good at? What are monkeys good at? Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, running small businesses, <laughs> cutting people's uh, hair, and driving very good, cars. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they love Spain. Oh, and foiling bank robberies. <laughs> right. Yeah, they're great. Well, something else they're good at, right, is like weighing up the situation. <laughs> ah! Ah! Oh, God! If you stick them in a, in like a, a field with loads of, like, obstacles on it, Right, they're good at sort of, yeah, I can get over that, I know how to climb over that, I'll swing from there to there, that sort of thing, right? Okay. So the people in charge of somewhere, I've thought- oh, Somewhere! Come on. I've thought we can use that, we can use that skill, right? What? And what, what, what they've done is they've got a lo load of, uh, little monkeys, right? They've given an IQ test. Yeah. And the ones that score above 80, right? Get to produce this show next week. <laughs> Join the army. <laughs> <laughs> right. How do they join the army, and what do they do? They just um, what they do is they, they set little obstacle courses up for them. They do that. They do a cross country run. They do um, the a cross country test. run. Yeah. Okay. And then once they've done all that, they make them a little uniform, made to measure little uniform. Long, yeah. Slightly longer arms, shorter legs than usual. Yeah. Yeah. And. Uh, Basically, then they taught how to use a gun and that sort of thing. Yeah, of course they are. <laughs> uh, You're talking rubbish again. This this came this came through literally, you know, pretty late late on. So so you've not had a chance to cooperate all the facts as usual. Just have a look. 
Right. Uh, it's the inter- the bit I'm looking for is well, a why they're doing it, why are they doing it? Yeah. Why do we need monkeys in the army? And secondly, why are we giving them guns? I'll yeah. just check to see if any of that. I love the fact we only let gays in recently. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Talk amongst yourselves. Yeah. Um, just have a lot. I can't read it. I, that's just too much pressure. But I'm it's sure rubbish. Just have a, just have a, but have it's a rubbish. Line. They don't get. It's, again, it's the way that. There are things that, that you, there are, there are animal cores, right? There are horses, there are dolphins, sea lions, uh, you know, there are lots and lots of animals in the army, but they don't have to pass <laughs> an obstacle test as such, and they're not taught to fire guns. We'll You've straight away assumed that they're gonna be, there's gonna be uh, loads of squads of men, and then just one little monkey in the middle. <laughs> Like, you know, he, did, he came second on the test. He's in. <laughs> He's in, boys. What do you think, Steve? You've, you've read it? Well, as ever, Carl, this is an arbitrary email sent by one of our listeners. You know what Ricky and I think of them. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so we're not really basing this on hard evidence. We're basing it on the ramblings of one of our listeners. Rubbish. Once again, lazy, rubbish, uncorroborated, nonsense, the stupid test that you got wrong. Rick, that <laughs> sounds like monkey news to me. <laughs> Carl's getting a little bit stressed, aren't you? No, I, I just, I just, you know, got to keep focused, got to keep the show good and that. Yeah. You know, and in the yeah. new year the idea was come up with some good snappy stuff. Yeah. And today I just think it's, it's been a mess with you, to be honest. I mean, this is the sort of thing I'd prefer to do after the show as, as the producer. Yeah. But... You know, I, do you know what, I, I think it's a discipline problem. <laughs> is I'm it because sure is, is, is it because I just put sellotape on your head? Well, that, that's a bit to do with it. But just, you know, let's, let's just focus but on... But I didn't put it when there was any hair on your eyebrows, I put it across your forehead. Right. What do you think of that then? Yeah. We've got one more bit left. Brilliant. One more fact. Um, the French, right, when they were at war, um... <laughs> <laughs> David Sharm, I just imagine him just introducing the amazing... Which, which war was this? It was still the World War, uh... One World or two. War, World go War on. Two. It's fifty-fifty. Go on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> right, right. World War Two. Uh, what the French did. Uh, did everyone needs a code. Right. <laughs> everyone needs a code. <laughs> yep. A code when you when you're in the army. This is a Disney song. Right. <laughs> um, and you know to sort of give the go ahead if you want to go into battle and stuff. Okay. Right. So. Um, <laughs> everyone needs a code. <laughs> <laughs> but the weird Game thing show. is, right? The weird thing Everyone. is, do you know what? Do you know what theirs was? Go on. Do you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I know what it is. It's so, what was the, the French code for? What to sort of say? Right? Yeah. Go on. <laughs> but they had more than one. <laughs> on on this day. <laughs> but I don't know what day it is. <laughs> on All this right. day. Oh, um, what? It's like saying, what am I thinking of? <laughs> what was the battle? What was the? Okay, right. so, all right, what- Look at him, look at him, look, he's genuinely confused that I've asked this question. Right. It was- No! It was... No, no, if you ask me a question, ask me the question correctly. Um, what was the- what was the code for battle during what battle? World War Two. No, that's not a battle. That's a war. Yeah, it was in a war, yeah. <laughs> it, I- it I was... don't know what to do. He right. confuses people. <laughs> oh. <laughs> all right, okay, what was it, Carl? What was the Yeah, code? what, what, what the are French you thinking code? of? Right. John's got a moustache. <laughs> <laughs> ah, what oh, are you talking my about? Lungs are that, burst. that was was a code that the French used. You know, like I mean, I, I just think it's a bit daft, right? Uh, because you could come up with that by mistake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Two French blokes talking in the trenches, and they see they see a major walk past, and they go, oh, "Look, John's got a moustache," and they all go and go, "No, I was just talking." <laughs> what are you talking about? Well, the way. I, I don't think that's a good code. I'm, I'm not. I don't know. believe it is the code. No, it is seriously. And what? Uh, and it's would, just it, that would, would it have been? Would it have been it. said in French? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, the yeah. The, guessing. The, guessing. The, yeah. 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 No, but what? You see, I can't even be, be bothered. <laughs> what? <laughs> what are you saying, Carl? Because it's not a very good code. Do you know, like we've talked in the past about you know things you don't see, and I said an old man eating a Twix. <laughs> yeah. You have to use that. That wouldn't. That's safe. Because no one is ever going to see a man having an old, you know, an old man having a Twix. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, use that as a code. Don't use a <laughs> saying, John's got a moustache, that could crop up. <laughs> and it's what? like the war's kicked off. Why did, how, why did how'd that happen? Well, I said John had a moustache. Oh. Yeah, two French folks would never be saying, John's got a moustache. <laughs>
<laughs> Why would they? they? Because back then they were fashionable. <laughs> <laughs> it nearly makes sense, doesn't he? I assume it would have been Jean. Yeah. No, probably John. And I, I, how would this how would this code have been? I mean, who would have I don't announced know, this? I just to read everyone? it. I read it like that, Steve. That's what was on the internet. This is a code <laughs> that was used. John's got. But don't be stash. angry with me. I know, but you're always asking questions. <laughs> that's because I'm interested in history. <laughs> yeah. No, it's genu you're genuinely interesting, bloke. Calm. We'd like to know. I'd like to film you secretly. You know, like they do, like Nature Watch, when they put it in a uh, like a, <laughs> you know, I mean, badges sort of thing, Warren, right? Yeah. And they just they just watch it. I'd like to see what you do. Pop around with them. <laughs> I wish I could download the music in your head because it'd be <laughs> and you see something weird, you go <laughs> and then you read that and you go <laughs> and you write it down and that's what comes out. John's got a moustache. They I'd could like have, to see they next could have, Christmas. Imagine the French, right, for their battle cry, for their battle code to know. It's going ahead, they're going over the top, is you never see an old bloke eating a Twix. <laughs> Imagine that. Yeah, but the, all these things are things that I think in my head. Right? <laughs> yes! Keep them in there! <laughs> Do you know what like before?